hi guys welcome to my channel today we're going to be talking about one of the most notorious convicted serial killers and rapists in south africa he goes by the name of moses Satole, aka the abc murderer Sitole was born in 1964, November the 17th, in Fort Loras, a township south of Boxburg in the Transvaal province, now known as the Gauteng province. Sitole was one of five children born in a poverty-stricken family, of which his family's financial status was gravely exasperated by his father's untimely death. His now widowed mother, seemingly unable to take care of the new financial burden, took her children and abandoned them at a police station. Sitola grew up in an orphanage in KZN, of which he claimed that he was abused. Sitola appeared to be a mild-mannered man in his society. Most would even say that he was charming. He ran a shell organization during the time of his crimes, contradictory to the crimes he was committing, called Youth Against Human Abuse, which was naturally dedicated towards the eradication of child abuse. Sitola was dubbed the ABC murderer because he committed his crimes in Atridville, then he moved to Boxford and finally landed in Cleveland. It is not known who his first victims were, but his first recorded rape victim was 29-year-old Patricia Kumalo, who was attacked in 1989. Three other known ladies came forth, including Boniswa Dores Shwakamisa, who was attacked by Sitole in February 1989. Boniswa went and filed a case against Moses, which led to his arrest and trial. He was jailed in 1989 at Boxburg Prison for six years. He was released early in 1993 on good behavior. If there's anything Shwakamisa's case did for Moses was teach him that leaving life victims served no other purpose but just um, yielding um, consequences of which were obviously bound to be bad for him. So that is what I believe unleashed the monster in Moses. He targeted unemployed young black females from the ages of 19 to 45 offering them jobs in his shell organization of which there were not even any jobs to begin with he'd meet up with the women and then walk with them through his killing sites as um, a double up to his office place and then once at the killing sites he would tell them that he had been hurt by a female so he was going to rape and kill them unless if they were able to defend themselves from him in other words defeat him after that he would bind rape beat and kill them um, most of the time his signature move was strangling his victims with their own underwear Moses's brutality knew no bounds or limits or any restrictions that like he would um, contact his victims families just to taunt them um, go to his victims funerals for like for no other reason but just to taunt his victims and their families um he sparked a nationwide panic and even um nelson mandela had to step in and ask the public to help with the apprehension of sitole in october the 3rd 1993 sitole called the gauteng newspaper the star saying that he was joseph maguena and that he was the man um, sought after for um his crimes he then gave the newspaper a lengthy interview um, admitting to almost all of his crimes except for the ones committed in Cleveland. He also insisted that he was not um, responsible for the murder of two-year-old Sbusiso um, Langamanza and his mother. Further trying to prove that he did not kill Sbusiso Langamanza, he said that he loves children. 
Moses further went to say that he hated black women, especially after one um, falsely accused him of raping her. While still in his interview with the police to further prove that he is who he says he is, he went and um, gave out clues about an undiscovered victim. Meanwhile, the police learned that um, all the females that were attacked by Sitole went missing after they um, spoke to a man. The police went and um, traced and checked the number that um, all of the women called before they died, of which um, led them to Sitole's sister. After the police matched Joseph Marguenia's, um patterns to those of um, Moses Sitole, it was publicly announced um, that they found the, 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 the killer and his identity and everything was put out and he was basically a wanted person for the crimes he committed. Sitole called his brother-in-law and told him that he needed a gun to protect himself. His brother-in-law agreed to get him a gun and told him that they would meet in the firms at Benoni where he works. And then he called the police and told them that he is going to meet up with Sitole on, um, at the firms that he works at. The police sent an undercover cop to go and disguise himself so he can apprehend Sitole. Sitole was later apprehended that same day. At the police station, he refused to give his statement to a male officer and demanded to give his statement to a female officer. Moses claimed to have murdered over 10 people and went to describe several of them whilst he masturbated. Sitole was formally charged with 38 murders, whilst in remand, Sitole agreed to sell a recording to an inmate with the promise of his share of the benefits going to his daughter. This time, Sitole admitted to 29 murders, but said that he did not know where the other nine are from. According to Sitole, he enjoyed the thrill of watching his victims' eyes bulge as they died. However, at his trial, Sitole contradicted his statements and said that he was forced to um, confess by the um, police officers and claimed innocence for all of the charges against him. On the 4th of December 1994, Sitole was charged with 38 counts of murder, 40 counts of rape, and 6 counts of robbery. Sitole is currently in the C-Mix section of Pretoria Central Prison, which is the highest security block in all of South Africa. Sitole's wife and daughter both had HIV and shortly died from the virus because they did not have access to health care. Unlike Sitole that is still getting treatment for his HIV in prison. All of Sitole's victims were female except for two-year-old Smusiso Nomtandazo Nlangamandla who received a head injury and died of exposure whilst Moses was raping and killing his mother. Poll of the day. Would you, as the judge and jury, give Sitole the same sentence he got, which was 2,410 years in prison with no chance of parole for the first 930 years? Or would you have given him the capital punishment, aka the death penalty? Let me know in the comment sections. And if you made it thus far into the video, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining and watching my video. If you liked it, please like the video, um, subscribe to the channel, um, please refer um, the channel to other people that might be interested in the work that I do. Enough. Enough.